Hey everybody, ampreparaguy.com, there's my phone number and my website. Please hit the like, share, and subscribe buttons. So we have a Drake L4B here. I worked on an Ameritron, what was it, an AL811 and an AL811H earlier. Figured out what needs to be done to them, gave the customers quotes, so I will show those later on. But today I will be going through this one, since I have all the parts. So, pretty clean. Someone already did the Harbach power supply board upgrade. So, I'm going to leave the stock resistors. I'm not going to put that board in from Harbach. Uh, the soft key... Uh, soft start and bias board. I had a problem with the last one I installed so what I do is I change these two resistors to a higher value so they don't run as hot and still gives more than enough voltage back to the cathodes to put the tubes in a cutoff. So I'll do that. I'm going to change the two prong receptacle for the key line and put an RCA plug in. I don't drill any holes in the chassis to do that, so you could always put it back. It just makes it easier than using that two prong receptacle. I check the SO239s, they're good. I'll change the meter lamp bulbs. One of them is out, but I always change them. I'm going to add reverse connected diodes between the B negative and the power supply and the RF deck. You could also put them across the meter, but I'm just gonna do it this other way this time. The impeller is good on the blower. You always want to put a piece of cardboard over the hole in the back just so it doesn't get damaged. Those, those impellers are delicate and if it gets damaged you have to replace the whole assembly. I will oil the fan motor. I'm gonna ground the grids. Change the electrolytic cap below. I believe I think it's a 50 microfarad, uh, no, 100 microfarad, 50 volt. I think. Let me have one here. Yeah, 50 volt, 100 microfarad. So I'm gonna change that out. Clean all the contacts and everything. You know, for the TR slash bias relay, the band switch, input rotary switch. Customer made a mistake and he actually shipped it with the chimneys installed. He took the tubes out so chimneys were destroyed. So luckily they're cheap and I have a couple here that I use anyway. I just always tell people to take them out because they're not needed. Um, I took the tubes out. I have the tubes. They are old iMac tubes. Well, they uh, The writing is like gone on them. They've been you know, used for so long. You know, they're just old and I um, I don't just go by that I also high potted them and one of them failed the anode to grid high pot test it started arcing right below six kilovolts so just to recap you know one of those tubes uh, should high pot to at least 8 kV DC both directions between the anode and the grid and the Chinese ones should high pot to you know around a kilovolt and, Preferably at least a kilovolt between the grid and the filament. Okay, so I'm going to take this apart and I'm going to get to work. So stay tuned. I'll see you guys soon. I just wanted to show the bottom real quick so the customer can see it and everybody else can see it. So I'll remove the choke between the grid and ground. There's one per socket. Ceramic disc caps and I'll ground the grids directly to the chassis with copper strap. I just noticed that this is for the ALC. I actually jumped the connection over to the ALC RCA jack and cut the wire for the ALC off that RCA connect center connection. So he's actually using this RCA jack. So Reconnect the ALC. I'll take this out, make a little template, and put an RCA jack right here. And then connect the diode to the center connection of the RCA jack. 
Here's the capacitor. I'll take that out. Clean the contacts on this relay. Clean the contacts on the input rotary switch. And we'll go from there. So stay tuned. See you guys soon. Okay, so there's my phone number and website again. And some people don't listen to the entire video, so they don't hear it when I say it. So, I got the Drake L4B. Show you everything I did. Added the meter protection diodes right over here this time, right here, between the B negative. Chassis reverse connected, 6 amp diodes. Clean the output rotary switch. I oiled the fan there. So I'll flip it over and show you the bottom. Be right back. Okay, so here's the bottom. Grounded the grids right to the metal with copper strap. Clean the input rotary switch assembly. Deoxic gold. Change the capacitor over here. Clean the relay contacts with deoxic gold really well. I made a RCA jack assembly for the key line. Punched three holes in a piece of copper and mounted it. So new, no new holes. Reconnected the AGC RCA jack is labeled here. See, piece of copper, everything's nice and clean. Reuse the old diode and the connection point, the stock connection point standoff piece right here, and also the stock ceramic disc cap. That's all set down here. Like I said before, the SO239s are good. So, I'll show you the power supply. There are other mods you can do. You can add a string of diodes in here inside the RF deck and disconnect these resistors. But uh, then I'd have to make a board and increase the, the amount that I'd have to charge the customer. So an easy way to cut down on the heat coming out of the power supply is by doubling the resistance of these two resistors. Stock, they're 50K. So I put it a 50K, 50 watt. So these are 100K, 50 watt, both in series with another 5K resistor below. Provides the tubes with like 100, 120 something or so volts to put them in a cutoff. You know, fit back to the cathodes. So cathode for each tube. Replace some of the high voltage wiring. And this amp got a brand new set of Pentalab tubes. So this thing's all set, tested, full output, and it's ready to go back to the customer. So if you need an amplifier repaired, feel free to give me a call. My phone number is 203-892-4119. It's 203-892-4119. 73.